Welcome to another Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Kai, and today we are tying up a peeping October caddis. Um, it's a classic pattern. George Anderson is the one credited for sort of originally coming up with the uh, peeping or peeking sort of idea with the cased caddis and a little bit of caddis uh, coming out of its casing. Uh, some guys by the name of Carl and Bob, um, can't think of their last names off the top of my head, but they are the ones who sort of inverted this fly, changed it from the peeking caddis uh, to the peeping caddis, and uh, that's what we're going with today. So uh, we have a Firehole 516 size 10 in the vise and the new ASG Competition uh, Malted Brown B, uh, four millimeter. Uh, so first thing, we're gonna go ahead, start wrapping our thread right behind the eye. I'm using the UTC Tan 70 denier thread. Um, I use 70 for most all my flies, unless uh, we're talking about streamers. I just like the properties, you know, you can flatten it out, kind of bunch it up and make it, uh, make it what you want it. So first we're gonna take our braided core here, uh, orange, our braided sparkle core, and give that a few wraps, kind of tighten it down. Um, we like it to stick out a couple millimeters here behind the bend of the hook, not too far, um, not too close. As you can see, I went ahead and pre-burned these. Um, if you try and do it after, you're gonna end up burning all of your hackle and dubbing. So go ahead and get this tightened on nice and securely. Get that on there, go ahead, snip off the excess right behind the bead. And we'll go over that a few more times. Give us a nice, smooth surface to work on. It's a nice hot spot on the fly. Makes for a really fishy little guy. So we go ahead here, a few more thread wraps over our body, give us a nice base to work on. There we are. Next we take some Grizzly Hackle. I've got this nice half cape from Whiting Farms. That is a dry fry fly hackle, but you'll see here in a bit why it does not really matter. So go ahead, we're gonna preen back the tip of the feather, something like this here. And when I go ahead and clip it off, um, I do that, you certainly don't need to, but I do that to make a cleaner tying point and to add less bulk and nonsense here to the back of my fly. So I like to do that with a lot of different hackles and such. Go ahead, get that in there nice and secure. Take your thread up just a little bit. Uh, then we're gonna start palmering this around. It doesn't really matter too much which way you go or which way you wrap it. Um, and you'll see why here in a sec. Shout out to my good friend, Trey Gershon. Uh, he's a local fishing guide and uh, he's kind of the one that uh, gave me some inspiration here to do this fly. So uh, he does a lot of fishing out in the, uh, the western slope of Colorado, uh, frying pan. Roaring Fork and the Lower Colorado River. Typically in the past, I have used wood duck, um, either natural or just kind of a dunny color wood duck here for my, my hackle. Um, this hackle is supposed to represent the legs on the caddis as it starts peeping out. Um, so I think this gives it a little better look in the water. Uh, it kind of stays a little more wild, I guess you could say. Uh, the wood duck gets a little softer when wet and sort of just sucks in here to the pearl. Um, this stays out, gives it more of a pulsy, um, kind of a live look. So really like this, this hackle. Go ahead, work it back, tie the thread over so it's pushing the hackle back. Uh, and there you have it. Next material we're gonna tie in is our rib. It's not really a rib, uh, case caddis don't need a rib. 
but I think that it adds a little bit of dimension to the fly, uh, as well as durability. That's uh, you're gonna get a few more fish out of this fly with a nice ribbing. Um, I'm just using UTC Gold, and uh, the small size you could totally get away with a brassy, um, even an extra small um, copper gold. Not really an important piece of the fly, but. Uh, next step, we're going to take some of the SLF Spiky Squirrel Dubbin. Uh, it's a super awesome dubbin for this. It's got a lot of grays, some blacks, um, some more natural browns, uh, kind of fox hair red kind of colors in it. Um, and it it's a good look for a case caddis with all the random sticks and rocks uh, you find in the bottom of the river that they make their homes out of. So, Take a nice bit of this. Um, no need to worry about keeping it super thin. Uh, the October caddis is a really big, kind of gnarly bug. So I just go ahead and noodle that on. I uh, don't really ever use dubbing wax. I find just wetting my fingers works better, gets less sticky, and gives that dub a more natural look. So we go ahead and start wrapping that around towards the front, add a little more, nice little side noodle. This is a good fly to be fishing uh, in the September, October types of kind of time of year. Um, you can fish at other times as well, of course, but October comes, these caddis start uh, emerging and working their way up, doing their thing. So, super good fly for here in Colorado. Um, as I mentioned, T. Gersh fishes it on the lower Colorado quite a bit. Um, other rivers with really healthy caddis populations, uh, you know, the Gunnison, the Taylor River, are some others that this fly is going to be pretty effective on. So, after we get our dubbing up there, um, you see it's kind of a mess, no worries, uh, it's all part of it. We go ahead and take our wire and start ribbing the opposite direction that we wrapped our dubbing. I'm usually going to get three, four turns here. Um, again, not really an important part of the fly when it comes down to look. Um, so, do what you need. Go ahead and helicopter that wire out. From there, I like to take a dubbing brush, I'll really rough this up a little, get that spiky squirrel kind of coming out at all angles, all ways. Um, as you see, it looks, looks pretty good and messy there. We're gonna give the fly a whip finish. I always like to whip finish at least twice on my flies. Uh, the first one fails. We don't want to trim off any of that hackle on the back of the fly. Um, let's see, the squirrel dubbing gives a real nice buggy look. Um, give it one more little brush to get all the loose stuff out of there with the dubbing brush and there you have the peeping october caddis super simple quick uh, and very effective fly um, got a real heavy bead on here you're going to want to be fishing this at the bottom of the river um, that's where these caddis hang out and they kind of drift through the seams there at the bottom i want to have plenty of weight on it uh, so that's why we went ahead and oversized the bead here today uh, that is it